I've come to meet a scientist who has built the world's first anthropometric robot, which means it mimics the human body. Because he believes that our physical form actually helps shape the way we think. And without a body, artificial intelligence cannot exist. What we're interested in is how the brain controls the body. And having built the body, we've realized what a serious problem that is. Mm -hmm. So can I interact with it? I mean, will it... Would you like, would you like to shake hands with it? Um, yes, provided <laughs> it doesn't clonk me anywhere sort of sensitive, yeah. but... Um... OK. Right, well, oh, if you'd okay. just like to give its hand a good squeeze... Right. ..and then a shake... Oh, oh, it's squeezing back. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> it's a Masonic handshake, I think. <laughs> So it's really responding to contact from with me, yeah. picking up something and... It does give people the sensation of interacting with something that, uh, in a way, is really like themselves. Yeah. This robot, called Eke Robot, obviously has no blood, skin or flesh. But it has bones, joints, muscles and tendons that move exactly like ours. So it's able to have human-like interactions with its world. Now, this is an extraordinary uh, piece of engineering, but how does it help in actually getting insight into intelligence? We are interested in what is known as uh, embodied intelligence. Uh, and this is the idea that your intelligence is not a sort of abstract, uh, free intelligence. It's actually tied very much to having a body, and in particular, to having a human body. Now, in order to investigate this, what we had to do was build a robot that had as near to a human body as we could manage. Then we can begin investigating how uh, the way it interacts with the world uh, enables it to develop a particular sort of intelligence for um, dealing with objects uh, and so on. And once we get on that track, we'll be able to see how that intelligence, I won't call it a mind, I'll just call it an intelligence, how that is actually determined and conditioned by its body. And you think it'll be distinct from the sort of intelligence that... <laughs> Does it know it's talking about me? It's, uh, <laughs> it seems to be very... Um, the, the sort of intelligence that, um, before you, they were doing things in robots, it was sort of computers, and that doesn't really have a sense of a body at all. I mean, it's sort of a box. What happened when people started trying to make robots that were controlled by AI and computers is that they found that the the things that we thought would be difficult, like playing drafts or something like that, were extremely easy. What was really difficult was actually moving the pieces. So the interaction with the world is very, very difficult and requires a lot of computation. But we're completely unaware of this. And what about the sort of ultimate goal of things like uh, imagination or consciousness? I mean, that this would actually become conscious of its own body. Um, well, that, I think, is the most interesting question of all. Uh, but there are lots of problems to overcome before we get to that stage. I happen to believe that it will be possible one day to build a machine that will have a kind of consciousness, whether it's the same kind of consciousness as ours, whatever that means, uh, will be an issue. But I, but I think this is the way. I don't really believe that we are going to arrive at consciousness with a disembodied computer.